Hey there, it's me again, Michelle, and welcome back to my Canadian History Channel. Today's episode is about conscription in Canada, the drafting of people for mandatory military service during wartime. Okay, so what is conscription anyways? Well, like I just said, conscription is the drafting of people for mandatory military service during wartime. In the United States, conscription is known as the draft. Canadians have been conscripted twice in history, and both times only males were conscripted. The first time was during the First World War, and the second time was during the Second World War. Conscription became an issue that divided Canada, where most English-speaking Canadians supported it, while most French-speaking Canadians opposed it. Today, though, Canada does not have mandatory military service, as the Canadian Armed Forces is based on a voluntary service. Well, how does conscription work? Under conscription, all males of a certain age, generally between the ages of 20 and 45, must register with the government for military service. Once registered, these people may be called out for military service, and some people may be excused from military service altogether. Exemptions could include people in certain occupations, or people who suffer from physical or mental illness or disability. Now let's look at conscription during the First World War. Canada did not have conscription when the First World War started. Instead, men volunteered for the military. From 1914 until 1915, about 330,000 men volunteered, so Canada had enough soldiers at the time. But by 1916, things had changed. The death toll in the war was very high. By the summer of 1917, more than 130,000 Canadians had been killed or injured, and the horrors of the war led to fewer volunteers. Prime Minister Robert Borden knew that the war effort required more soldiers, so he decided to introduce conscription. This was not popular with the French Canadians, though. Sir Wilfrid Laurier, the Liberal leader, opposed it, and Henri Bourassa, an important French nationalist, was also against it. Regardless, Borden's government passed the Military Service Act on September 20th, 1917. As a result, all male citizens between the ages of 20 and 45 could be conscripted. The act was popular because it gave women in the military and women who were, clo who were close relatives of men in the military the right to vote. And Borden knew that because of this, women would vote for him. The 1917 election. The election of 1917 was held on December 17th, and conscription became the biggest issue in the election. To ensure a victory, Borden tried to form a coalition government with Laurier's Liberals, but Laurier refused. So instead, Borden formed a union government with a group of Liberal Party members and independents, and Borden's union government won the election. But he won only three seats in Quebec, where he was very unpopular. And it wasn't just the people of Quebec that disliked Borden, as many farmers in the West did not like him either. They needed their sons to farm, not to fight. Then came the 1918 anti-conscription riots. On March 28, 1918, anti-conscription riots occurred in Quebec City and would not end until April 1st. Ottawa declared martial law and sent 6,000 soldiers to Quebec. Protesters fought against the soldiers, and the soldiers fought back. In the end, four civilians were killed, and 150 were wounded. The protesters were unarmed, and the riots further divided English and French Canada. In the end, though, only about 125,000 men were conscripted during the First World War, but only about 24,000 were actually sent to fight. Now, let's look at conscription for the Second World War. Prime Minister William Lloyd Mackenzie King did not want to, to conscript men during the Second World War as he did not want Quebec to turn against him, but he knew that many Anglophones wanted conscription. King said his government would not conscript soldiers to fight abroad, but by June 1940, Belgium and France had fallen to Nazi Germany. Many Canadians wanted to boost the country's war effort, and in response, the National Resources Mobilization Act was passed on June 21, 1940. It allowed conscription only for home defense. 
Mo Montreal Mayor Camillien Hood spoke out against the act and he was interned, meaning made a prisoner for political or military reasons, for four years after he urged people to ignore their call-up papers. By 1941, fewer men were volunteering for the military, so King decided to have a non-binding referendum on conscription. Most people in Quebec voted against it, while all other pro provinces voted for it, with around 80% in favour. Bill 80 was then passed. It gave the government permission to conscript soldiers to serve abroad. King hoped he would not have to use conscription, but he did. After the D-Day invasion in June 1944, the Canadian military was losing strength and needed more troops. In the end, only around 13,000 soldiers went abroad. Fewer than 2,500 reached the front lines. French Canadians were angry, but not nearly as angry as, as they had been during the First World War. Well, that's it for this episode in Canadian history. As a parting graphic, please have a look at this chart provided by Statistics Canada Archives. I'll leave it on the screen for a few moments so you can have time to hit the pause button and have a chance to review it. Okay, we're back. Please stay tuned for the next episode, The Spanish Influenza, the epidemic of 1918 that killed approximately 50,000 people in Canada. Now remember, at any time, feel free to leave comments or questions below and I'll do my best to respond to them all. And please, be a true Canadian and be polite. And if you like this content, give this video a thumbs up and click that subscribe button below to see more. And remember, if you wish, hit the bell if you'd like to be notified of any new content. Thanks everyone and have a great day. Yeah.